We are now pleased to be joined by one of our upcoming stars of the WTA. Uh, she's been on the podcast multiple times and just coming off a third round appearance at Roland Garros and uh, now with those latest results inside the top 90 of the WTA. And uh, we're happy to welcome back here a good friend of the podcast. I think I can safely use that term now after the number of times we've spoken with her. Layla Annie Fernandez, thank you for joining us once again. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm so happy, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, Layla, I was, I was just looking uh, at your progression in the rankings. And, you know, this same point last year in 2019, you were number 250 in the world in the WTA. And flash forward a year, I, I know you had certain goals for yourself, of course, in 2020. But considering six months out, six months off, did you ever expect in, in that one year span you could manage to get inside the top 90 of the tour? And, and how do you explain just, just such a, a fast progression uh, in, in your game? Uh, honestly, yes, I did think I was going to be in the top 100, top 90. And even with all those setbacks and the, the, the way I started last year. But, you know, I have a great team here in, in Egypt, also back home. They've, we've set up a calendar and everybody's been following it. I've been following it. So that helped a lot. Uh, obviously, I wanted to finish a little bit higher this year. but. Uh, top 90 is still good and it's a good start for next year. I think I need to start using my calendar that way and, and setting those <laughs> goals to see if I have the same kind of improvements that you've had over the last year. Um, I mean, last year we were talking to you and you were the junior French Open champion and that seemed like such a big deal at the time. And, and now here we are flash forward like one year, well, I guess a year and a half because it was in September, October, and you make the third round as a professional at Roland Garros. Talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, what it means to have such a successful transition to playing there as a pro and, and what it feels like uh, for you to, to be making the third round of a, a major event like that now. It, it honestly means a lot because I know how hard it is to transition from juniors to pros. There, I've heard so many stories of juniors who haven't made it, like are still struggling, and there's some who did make it. And like, I, I honestly didn't want to be in the first category. So I felt like I had a little bit of pressure here. And I also didn't want to go to university because that was still an option. But you know, with the with the results and with that added pressure, I think that motivated me even more to, to keep going and to get an opportunity of playing in Grand Slams this year with everything going on. It just made a, everybody in the family happy, including me. And, you know, playing in the French Open again this year as a pro, it was a, it was a, it was a great feeling. I always, like I said, I've always felt comfortable in the red clay in Paris and, uh, you know, Felt a little disappointing losing in the third round, but I'm still happy with the with the way it transitioned from juniors to to Grand Slam third round. And you got to have two Grand Slams almost back to back because the U.S. Open and French Open were so close this year, which was strange for us watching. I don't know what it was like playing and going so quickly from the hard courts to the clay. But uh, can you talk a little bit about what bubble life was like at those two Grand Slams and maybe compare the experience from from New York to Paris for our listeners? It was definitely different. Um, maybe New York was a little strict, stricter with the, the players, but you know we still had to do the test. We still had to stay in the, in the hotel when we're in the tournament. And then we still have to take temperature checks and, and everything, follow the protocols, keep, stay six feet away from, from people. So I didn't feel like there was much different, only New York was maybe a little stricter. And I, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, you, you talked about uh, obviously the six months off and, and that long break, but still getting inside that top 100 uh, from where you were last season. And, and we look at uh, the front end of 2020 and uh, you had such unbelievable results. Of course, Acapulco making the finals there, quarterfinals, Monterey, kind of a big win over Belinda Bencic and Fed Cup. Was there kind of a signature or standout moment to you in this 2020 year where, where you felt like you hit another level in your tennis game? Um, maybe, but, you know, I was like, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know. Maybe, maybe not, but 
maybe against uh, Renata Zarzu in the semifinals again in Acapulco. That was definitely the toughest moment because there was a, a whole crowd, a whole country rooting against me. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I think uh, mentally, physically, I was a little bit more ready and I was just happy to get that win. And to have that feeling of having a whole crowd against you was definitely not easy and not favorable. But um, having my, my coaches behind me, that was more than enough for, for me to get the win. And uh, just, just looking at, I, I suppose, the season as a whole, um, what has been really, really the best part of this year for you? And uh, what would be maybe the, the negative aspects that were, were a bit more challenging, do you think? It was the pandemic, <laughs> the, the whole, like, staying at home, good and the bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I, I like that I was able to stay home, spend time with my family, because apart from December, November and December, I haven't spent much time with uh, with my mom, so it was great to be able to catch up with her, uh, talk with her, spend time together, like, like kind of pick up some hobbies too, like we're cooking together, which is great, but it was also a downside because it stopped our tournaments. We had to be patient. We didn't know when start when tournaments would start again or how to schedule our calendar, how hard should we train, and how how much intensity and hour do we put in, in the day uh, and just to not burn out? Leilani, I wanted to ask you, uh, just if you're feeling that you're being noticed more these days, um, I mean, there's no fans around really or a limited amount of fans, although I would imagine you'd be getting autograph requests a lot more now after your success this year, so get ready for that whenever the pandemic ends. But just even in the locker room and amongst the players, I would imagine the you play a player like Benchich or Sloan Stevens, for example, they probably don't know all that much about you. And then you start to face some of them maybe a second time and, you know, you're knocking off seated players at, at a slam now. Do you feel there's any difference in, in the way people either look at you or approach you or, or even how they are across the net from you as you're playing them now? Um, yeah, I feel like they kind of see me a little bit more as a player and not kind of a junior player trying to be a pro. So it's great to to kind of have that that uh, respect, but you know, like in the locker rooms, we we say hi to each other. We're we're always so polite, so we're not. There's no like uh, any uh, bad bad moments between it, anybody in the locker rooms or outside the tennis court. So I think it's great that all the the tennis players are so respectful and they're like always let's say nice nice to me and some of them are even helping me like giving me some tips which is which is great for them and I'm I'm extremely grateful for for those players I'm, I'm sure the reactions when they see your name in the draw if they're facing you next is is not as, as smiling and and, and and positive but uh, that's a good thing and uh, yeah, just a testament to to how you've come along this year. When we last spoke to you, was uh, towards the beginning or just after your run, perhaps? No, it was at the beginning of the US Open. You had just beaten Vera Zvonareva for your first uh, slam win as a pro. And we asked you, you know, what was the, the preparation going to be now to get ready for your second round match? And it was really funny because you said, I've got like a university assignment or something that you have <laughs> to work on in the short term before you could even think about your next round match. Um, can you talk a little bit uh, about uh, what? what part of your life school is taking up, what you're studying, and, and how big of a commitment that is for you? Uh, well, first of all, school is really important. <laughs> like, um, for me, I'm currently taking business uh, and administration uh, in Indiana University, and the teachers are very, very flexible. I just have to tell them that I'm currently playing a tournament, or I'm out of the country, and they would either give me a few days extra if I need to, but honestly, school is great for me because it takes my mind off of tennis sometimes. If I think too much tennis, then it's like either added pressure or it's not um, as enjoyable as, uh, as before. But having school there, it's great. I'm, I'm actually really excited about university more than high school. So I'm, let's say, taking my, my courses a little bit more seriously. 
And is that something that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of players your age or a little bit older have decided, hey, you know what, I'm having so much success playing tennis, I'm just going to put the school stuff on hold. Where does that drive for you, you know, to place that at such a high level of importance come from? Is it your parents? Does it just come from within? Um, is there any temptation to, to put it off until later? Um, in high school, there was a lot of temptation of putting it off later, but with my mom and dad pushing me to finish high school, and once I finished it, I was just extremely happy, grateful, and then I had, I think, two to three weeks off with no school, and between my trainings, uh, fitness training, tennis, I honestly didn't know what to do. Like, I just felt lost. I didn't want to be on my phone all day either so when university courses started again i was extremely grateful and i think that's what is keeping me going now like i don't need my my mom and dad to push me as much as in high school anymore i'm just it on my own because i'm actually enjoying it real uh, transition from uh, junior to professional not just uh, in tennis but uh, in <laughs> life as well you could say um, we, we saw some nice photos, actually, of you and uh, Jeannie Bouchard at the French Open. And uh, interestingly enough, both of you actually did make uh, the third round. And we, we've seen a great resurgence from, from Jeannie and the, the way she's been playing the past couple of months. Um, just curious what type of relationship you have with Jeannie. And, you know, she's eight years older than you and a player who, who's been to a Wimbledon final. And uh, is she someone who can serve, I guess, as a mentor, a player who has been at the, the top of the WTA in the past? Um, yes, of course. She's, she's given me a few tips uh, during Fed Cup and last time we saw each other in the French Open. So that, that's been good. We don't really talk a lot, but we do have respect for each other. We, we know how we both work and um, how hard it is the, 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 the professional tour is. So we're, we're, we're like in friendly terms, so it's good. And whenever we have time to kind of uh, hit together, we would do it like a heartbeat because we're both, we're both Canadians, we're both tennis players, we want to improve and we know that hitting together is going to bring us in a, in a higher level and it's going to prepare us for, for next tournaments. And uh, for you, in terms of next tournaments, I mean, the Grand Slam season is, of course, over for 2020. But uh, what are your plans for, for the remainder of the calendar year and, and where you hope to play? Um, well, currently I'm on vacation in Egypt, so I'll be spending a few days here and then going back to Florida to start preseason. I'm not going to continue playing tournaments this year. Um, and we're just going to get ready for 2021 and, you know, try to finish higher in the WTA. Well, all the best with uh, your off school and training and supporting your sister as she plays as well. And um, we're looking forward to 2021, hopefully a fresh start for everybody and a safe and, and healthy new year. And uh, can't wait to see what you've got in store for us next. So we look forward to, to future chats with you again, Leilani. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, definitely, next time we talk to, together, there will be more stuff to, interesting stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Layla. Thank you.